Hello everyone, it's Bob here, and welcome back to a little bit more Star Citizen. I'm sorry if I sound a bit nasally, I uh, am still not very well, I've got a lovely cold to add on to my continuing health woes, but thankfully starting to get a little bit better. As you can just see that popped up on the screen there, we're going to be doing the next stage of the uh, invasion, These the new Xenothreat quests, if they work. So. I had finished the previous ones where you had to do five bunker missions, but it didn't acknowledge that I had finished five bunker missions, so I had to go and do the last one, the five out of five, again, thanks to Ethan from Synchronous, I couldn't give any hand to do that in a pinch, because it was annoying me. Um, I was going into the bunker and then starting the mission to solo it, and then just dying because the NPCs were shooting me through the walls. So that's Star Citizen for you. We're just going to see if this one will work now. It didn't before. I may just have to go onto a server. There we go, so it's working. So this is the next stage, so stage two. Stage three was already on there, but I can't accept it. Whenever I try to accept it, it wouldn't work, because I haven't finished all the stages, you see? So that's what we're going to do in this one. Priority targets, one out of three. Our analysts have examined the intel from those Xenothreat recon teams, that would be us raiding the bunkers, but the data appears to be locked behind a sophisticated encryption system and requires a custom crypto key to access. We managed to locate several Xenothreat lieutenants operating in the system. You are to find and engage the suspects and see if they are in possession of a crypto key that will allow us to access the intel. Now, as I understand, these are ship combat missions, so we're going to go and take my 600i out because I do love gunning in the uh, the giant origin bar of soap because of its size of five cannons. It just makes easy work of most things. It's kind of become my daily driver just lately, actually, my 600i when I've been messing around. So we're just going to go and have some fun in that. Here we go. And um, as just for gear, hopefully because these are ship combat, I'm not going to need too much. I'm still in my uh, my wreck spelunking gear, so the stuff that I normally wear when I go uh, looking around all the uh, crashed ships, like the caterpillars and things, it's just to go and find loot boxes. I'm going to have to do a video on that again, I think, because it's still very much worth going to do those uh, to hunt loot. I may hold off and we'll see what happens in 3.23 regarding all the wreck sites, but I imagine they're still going to be very worthwhile to go and loot from. It's just going to be interesting to see what they do with all the inventory changes and everything. 3.23 is going to be huge. I'm going to ramble on about that a bit um, in this video. So obviously we've got so much to look forward to. All the inventory changes, the hangars, the wildlife that's coming in, all the graphical updates, clouds, water, uh, DLSS and all the graphical changes. There's, there's so, so, so much to see and do in the next patch that's coming. And I, I'm really looking forward to be able to sort of get back into meaty Star Citizen content again. And uh, not have a routine with it because having an upload schedule for YouTube is hell. Um, trying to make, set yourself a YouTube schedule but uh, just enjoy it and uh, be able to enjoy making that kind of content again without so much as a content drought so ooh, my hood is being a bit buggy there we go that's better let's try that again you are clear to launch. not sure where this one is uh, 31 million kilometers away that's another planet I want to say that's Hardcore or Hurston? Hurston. We shall go and investigate. Yeah, there's a random Cutlass Black just left here. <laughs> On the OM1 marker just above uh, Crusader. I don't very often just see ships abandoned. <laughs> Never mind. Right then, 3.23, where to begin? There's been so many Inside Star Citizens of it lately. Um, so, so much content that I, I, it's like I genuinely can't remember everything that's going to be included in the patch. And then of course there's going to be all the little Easter eggs and little sneaky things that they don't include in the patch notes as well. It's going to be massive. So obviously the biggest one is the overhaul to the inventory system and the mobilas so 
we're going to get all the all new Moby Glass, all the new inventory system, all the HUD, the, the, the latest ISC was talking about, the contact lenses uh, that your character has when you're not wearing a helmet, and then the visor that your character has when you are wearing a helmet, and how it's going to integrate the, the mini-map and important elements and hide things in the corners that you don't need to see, and it looks so much better, and I'm, I'm looking forward to very much testing it on the PTU and seeing how how easier it is to use compared to what there is today. Today's system works obviously but it's very clunky and as they mentioned in it you can quite easily get shot uh, when you're trying to loot something because you can't react fast enough to get out of a menu to then pull your weapon up to combat the threat that's attacking you. So that's going to be a massive one. The, the, the hangers, the hangers are coming in so um, being able to load vehicles from your hangar into your ship calling your ships up on the giant elevator, retrieving all of your gear in a freight elevator um, so that you can load it onto your ship, retrieving all of your um, trade goods, so if you're doing trading and then manually loading onto the ship and doing all that cool stuff genuinely can't wait. Not going to work so much for things like the whole C. I think that's still going to be quite interesting if they're just going to still include those giant boxes that we have to fly into for the whole C for it to be loaded. Um, the latest thing they've teased and that was in the, the latest patch for the Evocati um, a night or two ago was the inclusion of the wildlife so there's like they're, they're almost like cougars like cougar dog things now that can um, attack you and if they're solo they'll run away like a skittish animal but they go in packs and they uh, they'll they'll hunt you if uh, there's more than one of them. And apparently they do uh, like 20% armor damage if you uh, get attacked by one of them. So they're quite substantial. So it's not something you really want to be caught with alone without a weapon or at least a decent weapon to bring them down. Anyway, and when I was talking with this about Eason when we were doing the five out of five mission earlier on, I was discussing how I think it would be interesting that you could go full hunter in that kind of trade good if you like so you could hunt these animals and like like one pelt or one carcass as the court the case may be because obviously we can't skin anything at this point um maybe worth a, you know a, a decent few credits but then if you're like hunting the packs of them to actually make money from it it makes it worth the risk of being attacked by them I think that's a really cool idea that you could like farm these things for a, a decent amount of credits. Obviously, not it's not going to make you piles of money, but it's a good starting point for what it is. If that makes sense, it makes sense in my head. Maybe not so much when I'm saying it out loud, but yeah, something along those lines. There's also birds as well, so you can literally go duck hunting. Um, but those don't attack you like the dogs do; they just fly away. So it'd be interesting to like snipe birds for giggles sounds like very much my thing if I was bored just going into the savannah on Hurston and trying to go duck hunting um, what else have we got there's all the new graphics options coming in like the, the is it FSS the AMD one and then of course Nvidia DSS DLSS uh, the Instar Citizen one I can never remember the name of that they've invented for the engine itself um, the water has been changed so now we get the water physics in game as well uh, updated clouds so the clouds look a lot better including a setting for the clouds that essentially murders your computer graphically like crisis level settings so oh it's not on Hurston it's on one of the moons okay so there's now we're here I can just get into this but there's there's so 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 much to look forward to I genuinely can't wait to start messing about with it of course I'm gonna have to go backwards to get to the OM marker Doug Harkarik. Doug Hasarik, however you want to pronounce it. I'm assuming this is either going to be him or one of his friends. Contact. There's his friend. There we go, that's one. Oh, it wants us to collect the key, I see. Okay, a little bit more to this than. Uh, what I thought there was. Somebody's firing missiles at me. Got something for you. This person's firing missiles at me. And you're in a saber. I've fought a saber in a while. 
Well, there's more than one of them. That's one gone. And there's two of them gone. There should be a wreck somewhere around here. Let's just hope nothing else spawns in the meantime. I thought these were just going to be like bounty missions, like go and kill them. But no, we actually have to go and check corpses. A little bit more involved, it's all good. Oh, that didn't work. There really isn't an encryption key over there. Strange. I may have to uh, actually go and look this up because I'm a little bit lost here. There isn't an encryption key. I can't get on board the wreck because it's either bugging out or it just won't register as it's soft death and it won't let me on board. And the two corpses that were there wouldn't let me interact with them. I've lost my marker now as well, so I'm triple buggered. I may have to do a swift server change and try again whilst I have a quick look for information. I think this is a sort of gone beyond a bit bugged for this one. It's not working. Hopefully the next one will run a bit better. But that's Star Citizen, isn't it? Let's go and re-log in the bed and see what we can do. Okay, fresh server. And just having a quick look, it does indeed appear that they do drop keys, although it is a known bug that it can spawn in the wreck and make it unretrievable. So, of course it does, because it wouldn't be Star Citizen without something not working properly. So we'll try again. <laughs> and hopefully it'll work better this time. Ooh, somebody clip me. That was easy. Right, stop this time. Get away from the wreck so nothing clouts it. What have we got? Gladius. One. And another Gladius. There we go. Done so. Alright, where's our wreck? This one looks a bit more stable. Okay, let's see where this one is. Let's see if there's bodies or if we have to spawn it from the ship again. If it's broken, God alone knows. Oh no, there is a key on the marker. Okay, that makes it a little bit easier. Xeno Threat Encryption Key. Store. Just make sure we actually got the thing. There it is. It's cool, it's got a little border. A custom chipset bearing a Xenothreat symbol. It appears to have a crypto key interface for some encryption or decryption. Okay. I'm not going to equip it on my person. Oh, we have to drop it off. Okay. I'm just going to leave it in my backpack for now. And we'll fly back to the neon coloured 600i because of the way the sunlight's reflecting off it. Whoops, a daisy. No, I want to go on the lift. God, I can't wait for the new EVA. Something else that's coming in 323. 
29k drop off. I mean, we had to go back to Crusader. Or it wasn't towards the sun, so I'm guessing that that's actually Art Corp that we've got to go to. Not quite far enough for Microtech, I'm guessing. Yeah. Oh no, we've got to go to one of the stations. Or a jump point. We're going to a jump point? Okay. Very strange, but okay. Always it nice to go to some pretty scenery. Makes use of the jump points, I suppose, considering that uh, they don't have serve much other purpose right now, apart from trading, which we can't do because the whole sea stuff is broken because the docking ports don't work. Not the uh, the docking points on the uh, whole sea series, I should clarify, but the uh, the ports on um, the actual stations themselves don't connect properly, so they're all a bit broken. Same happens if you try and spawn the 890 as well sometimes. Interesting. So it's going to want to actually go into the station. Okie dokie. I am hoping that it won't be too long before we are actually coming to this point a lot more to fly along that path there where those lights are just above the top of the 600i and where the, the top spire is of the station leading to the jump point in a reworked 600i so that I've got all the gorgeous new bits and bobs in it and it's a bit more of a usable space and uh, we can get up to some proper mischief in pyro and, uh, go and enjoy solar flares again and flying around post-apocalyptic outposts and all that kind of good stuff with flora and fauna and new graphics and Landing new armors and oh, so many good things to look forward to we are going to have to land here aren't we I'm assuming I'm going to have to go and put it in one of those drop cabinets which I'm guessing is going to be in the admin hub area inside the Galleria. I suppose we'll soon find out. I don't think I've actually been inside this station yet. Uh, oh, here's the admin thing right here. And I'm correct. It is the admin thing and here's a drop-off cabinet. Okay. Let's see if we can put this thing in my hand and it works. Hello. It's duplicated it for some reason. There it is. So yeah, definitely a little bit buggy going on. Drop off. Cool design. Weird USB circuit body. Place. There we go. Contract complete. Zero out of three. That's not reassuring. Awarded 8.5k UEC. That's not bad for a mission like that. We need to go back to our 600 line now, don't we? I will have to wait for the next one to spawn, and then I guess I've got to do that two more times. So, for the, Oh, there we go. <laughs> that was easy. For the, uh, the sake of brevity, video length, and your own sanity if you're sat there watching this I will uh, just cut to either some combat or just finishing the mission because we've seen what happens now after it broke the first time must be our target Let's see if we can ping him with a few missiles first it's a Valkyrie easy. Mm, 
something else is winging me from behind. It's another Gladius. To fire in space, two dead corpses. And that there is an encryption key. Oh, with more fire. And dropping off key number two, we've had to come to Arc L3 this time, a little bit out of the way towards Microtech. We'll drop this one off and then we'll go and accept our last mission. That is a hammerhead. It's going to be an interesting one to pull a uh, tiny, tiny, Contact. tiny crypto key out of. some shields.
get some more front shield back. This one's fun. This one's a bit more of an engaging fight. So left, one missile makes the dream. fun. Let's go and get our key once that thing screams off into the distance. Oh no, not come off yet apparently. It's near the ship itself. Hmm, now where is this key? That's making it look like it's on the inside. Is it underneath? Not looking like it. See if I can get inside. Problem is, that's right in the middle of the ship, which makes me think this one's bugged. I could be wrong. Ooh, this is cool. Another reason to look forward to the next iteration of EBA. Oh, that's a big placeholder ball. Well, something tells me it's not going to be in the gunner's seat. So is it around the back? somehow. Oh, that's annoying. Cool fight, but it means I've got to do it again. A few moments later. Well, this was random. After destroying another hammerhead and having to get a second 600i out because one of the Vanguard Wardens that was defending it decided that today was a good day to die and chose ramming speed instead of combat. Um, and I had to come back. 
I uh, appear to have flown into the key as it came out of the hammerhead and it decided to relocate itself into the uh, the astrolab area of my 600 high. <laughs> I've got to see if I can get this thing now. There we go. This one's been uh, full of surprises. Anyway, let's get this thing to wherever it needs to go and finish this uh, bunch of Xenothreat missions. That's three of three, so that's the Xeno Threat Overdrive Part 2 finished. So, next we go on to Part 3, which again, I know it's all ship combat based, but I'm not quite sure what it entails, so that will be next time. This has taken me most of an evening to do, mainly due to the bugs and stuff that I do intend to include in the video. But uh, yeah, it's been a bit of a roller coaster this one. I have liked that you have to go and search the wrecks this time to go and find something rather than just exploding and it giving you credit for a mission. So it's a little bit more involved, but obviously it was a bit more buggy, as uh, I'm sure you'll see or will have seen by this point. So uh, hit and miss. Let's see what uh, part three comes up with. And uh, yeah, as I reflected on before, really looking to the 323 stuff. Um, really, really, really looking forward to it. So. For now, that's part two of the Xeno Threat Overdrive stuff. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed. If you think I deserve it, please give the video a like and a sub if you fancy sticking around. If you want to try Star Citizen, you can use my referral code on screen when registering that gives us both in-game credits to help us both out as well. See you in the next one.